Actually, just a video of her talking shit about an intersectional feminist. In this case, it's a woman named Lara Witt who wrote an article about questions an intersectional feminist should ask on a first date. Before really getting into those questions, Robin Millennial gives Lara Witt's Twitter account a shout out with this. She really seems to have a bug up her butt about white people, but whatever. Wow, that looks bad. Even worse if you decide not to look at the context. Instead, if you spend about one minute looking into it, you'll see that this tweet is actually at the end of a tiny little thread commenting on a story about a mixed race girl growing up in Ireland who was raised by white parents. It's a sad meditation on the limitations of colorblindness and how pretending race is irrelevant is something that does a disservice to real discrimination. Yeah, how is taking that into context make it any less racist? And looking at people as just people and not caring about their skin color is a good thing. The idea is that living in a cloistered white world can leave someone of mixed racial background unprepared for a world that will judge them on the basis of their skin color. Now I can't read Lara Witt's mind, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that her tweet about killing all the white people was a cheeky swipe at the idea of whiteness as a default identity disregarding the real discrimination people of color face. Yeah, it's still racist, you dip- I managed to decode that tricky bit of subtext by reading the actual text of what she wrote. And if you really want to ignore that context, I'd like to point out that Lara Witt has a white father and a white husband. Now, I don't know how bad it is in Europe, but I don't think it is nearly as bad as you are trying to make it out to be. Or how as bad as that article is trying to make it out to be. The racism in Europe might be worse than it is in the United States, but I still don't think it is absolutely horrendous. I can't be absolutely sure, but I highly doubt there is all that much discrimination towards people of color in Europe. And that still does not make it any less racist for her to say that. Having a white father and a white husband doesn't mean she isn't racist. Racism doesn't have to be consistent. The left is constantly saying that just because you have a black friend doesn't mean you aren't racist, which they are correct in that. What shows whether someone is racist is how they act. And how she's acting right there it's pretty racist. Maybe roaming millennials should try doing some basic research when bringing up a tweet in a video. She can start by scrolling up slightly. You're a f moron. Let's actually get to the meat of the article and roaming millennials rebuttal. Number one, do you believe that black lives matter? Yes? Wonderful. Let's start here. There are three categories that are non-negotiables for me, an understanding of race, class, and gender. I don't want to have to have laborious discussions where I have to prove to someone that white privilege or not black privilege exists. If they are willing to learn and listen and make the space to decenter their whiteness, if they're white, that's a good place to start. People aren't debating whether black lives do in fact matter. People are debating whether systemic racial injustice still exists. Is someone having a different opinion than you on the issue really that much of a turnout that you need to find out their position right away on the first date in order to screen them out? Okay, what Roman Millennial isn't getting here is that her position, and brace herself here, is one of privilege. So now you're gonna assume because in her experiences, well, how about black people who say that they weren't ever really discriminated? Are you gonna say the same thing about them? And to be honest, people could be seeing things that aren't actually there, which happens a lot because people's eyewitness testimony, for example, is absolute shit. Misinterpreting things is very common. It's easy to be a non-black person and respectfully disagree with a friendly person who doesn't think that systemic anti-black racial discrimination exists because you literally don't have any skin in the game. What you just said there about her not having the skin in the game, trying to say that she can't have an opinion because she's not black? You're a f***ing racist, Jack. If you're an asshole, you might not even care, I guess. But if you're someone who cares about injustice, systemic discrimination might bother you. And this may be another shocker, but there are some people out there, let's just call them intersectional feminists, who are passionate about fighting injustice. And if that passionate person is black and someone who therefore faces that systemic discrimination, they might not want to date someone who thinks they're delusional. Bringing that up on a first date is kind of rude, but I will give you that they are delusional if they bring that up on a first date. In fact, not just delusional, they're f bonkers. Basically, this first point is a simple test of empathy, and roaming millennial failed. No, I would say she did pretty well. Things like this are not normal. 
normal people don't do this. They don't just go through the, oh, hmm, I'm going to ask him these 10 questions and see what he thinks about it. No one does that. Only crazy racist people like that stupid <laughs> do shit like that. Number two, what are your thoughts on gender and sexual orientation? The gender binary is a tiny box and I wish it didn't exist, but it does. I can't imagine being with someone who is transphobic. As a feminist and woman of color, it would be a betrayal of what I stand for. Okay, this is something I see all the time and it bothers me. Believing in a gender binary is not the same thing as being transphobic. It kind of is transphobic. No, no it isn't, you f <laughs> moron. Being transphobic would be thinking that all trans people are just awful people. Or thinking that they're sick <laughs> And there is a gender binary because there's only two genders, you f <laughs> moron. There is no scientific evidence to say that there are more than two genders. Just because someone calls themselves a gender binary toaster strudel doesn't mean they are that. Not only does Roaming Millennial betray her ignorance on the subject, but she also denies the lived experience of people who fall outside the gender binary. Telling someone they're just confused in the face of evidence to the contrary is a pretty shitty thing to do. Oh, and since I know Roaming Millennial is such a lover of science and learning, I've included a link to my favorite science YouTuber, Concordance, and his video on binary gender. Yeah, and later I'll be debunking that video. But just a little spoiler, non-binary doesn't exist you f idiot you can't go from male to female psychologically one moment to the next wanting to wear makeup or dresses or whatever the f like that is not gender that is gender expression you want to say their gender expression is fluid yeah that would be correct but their gender is not they are either male or female maybe take 10 minutes out of your life and learn how to uh, not be a dick, basically. <laughs> really? How stupid are you? I grew up with Jewish, Israeli, and non-Israeli friends and Palestinian friends. Before even understanding how power and oppression work together, we understood the trivial hatred that colonized and put in constant danger the lives of Palestinians every single day. Being pro-Palestine is not the same thing as being anti-Semitic. I shouldn't even have to express that. But being pro-Palestine and BDS is a necessary part of intersectionality. You know, I get why people like this aren't big fans of Israel. You got the whole colonialism, settler, military power thing going on. But I don't understand why they would choose to identify themselves as being specifically pro-Palestine. Try going to Palestine and talking about all this LGBTQ non-binary gender stuff. Okay, so what do the LGBT policies of Israel or Palestine have to do with what Wit is talking about? Well, let's start with the fact that the Palestinians there don't like LGBT, and if they were separated from Israel, any gay people would be killed. Yeah, that's what it has to do with it. But if you'd like for me to give my side, well, Palestinians, for the most part, don't want a two-state solution. They want the destruction of Israel. Number six, what is your understanding of settler colonialism and indigenous rights? I didn't grow up in the United States. I was raised in Switzerland, so my understanding of how Europeans committed genocide against indigenous populations here in the US was fairly limited. It required a good deal of my own research to really understand how settler colonialism works and how devastating the eraser and violence against Native Americans is and was. Your date thinks Native Americans are tropes or relics of the past? No thanks. No one thinks that. Nobody. Okay, okay, this shit. She just kind of says that no one believes in it, right after reading a section where the author admits that she was someone who believed in it until she was educated on the subject. Actually, no, she did not say that. She said, and I quote, I didn't grow up in the United States, period. I was raised in Switzerland, so my understanding of how Europeans committed genocide against indigenous populations here in the United States was fairly limited, period. It required a good deal of my own research to really understand how settler colonialism works and how devastating the erasure and violence against Native Americans is and was. Then she says, your date thinks Native Americans are tropes or relics of the past? Question mark. No thanks. 
Nowhere in there did she say that was how she thought before. Number nine, do you support Muslim Americans and non-Muslim people from Islamic countries? I can't think of any other religion which has been vilified and lied about more than Islam in a cultural and systemic way. I am not Muslim, so I will stay in my lane, but I cannot imagine for a second even claiming to be a feminist if I didn't stand in solidarity with my Muslim friends and family. Guys, we need to make this plane ticket happen. I'm not even meaning right now. Let's send her to Saudi Arabia, home of the two most holy sites in Islam. Let's do it, guys. So Roaming Millennial says she's not meaning, but I assume she is because she's a liar, or at least disingenuous, or maybe she doesn't know what meaning is. She doesn't understand most of what she's talking about. So yeah, maybe that's it. I'm sure she understands it. However, there was no genocide. She was obviously joking. Anyway, Saudi Arabia is oppressive. What does that have to do with oppressing Muslim people in the U.S.? It has to do with the fact that the lady said that people are lying about Islam, which they're not. Islam is a violent religion, far more violent than that of Christianity. Also, read the title of Point Nine again. Wit explicitly writes non-Muslim people in Islamic countries needing support too. So she was speaking out against oppression in Saudi Arabia? Actually, no. Look at the title again for yourself. It says, do you support Muslim Americans and non-Muslim people from Islamic countries? From. Not in. From. Number 10. Does your allyship include disabled folks? Be mindful of others who mock disabled people. That kind of cruelty is inexcusable. On a date with someone who uses ableist slurs, walk away. I don't think you should be cruel to disabled people. Don't think you should be cruel to anybody, really. But I have the feeling that this person would probably qualify using the word retarded to describe something that was not literally retarded as ableist, which I don't agree with. Why can't she just agree with wit and move on? Does she really need to make something up just to talk shit? For the record, using that word to describe someone or something is a shitty thing to do. How is that making anything up? There are people who think the word retard is an ableist slang word. Which it could be, but quite frankly, I have no problem with it. I'm autistic. I have no f problem with someone saying retard. You know, I'm actually starting to think that this list existing is a good thing and that all intersectional feminists should follow it so that people can know who you are and get out of there as quickly as possible. That's a great line for a closer. This list was designed to screen up people exactly like Roaming Millennial. Very ironic. No, no, it's not. And now you're trying to insinuate that somehow she's racist, sexist, and hates disabled people? Which she's not, she's just a realist, and a person who's f***ing <laughs> sane. Plus, that was just a joke. She wasn't actually being serious. Personally, if I was on my first date ever, and they brought up how shitty this roaming millennial video was, I'd be crushing on her pretty hard. Ay, you're just a soy boy cuck. You know what, what does Roaming Millennial even know? She can't even read a damn article. No, she read it pretty well. There were a few things she was incorrect on, and I'll give you credit for pointing that out. But the one who can't read is you. So I'll wrap this up, and um, I guess I'm going to be alone forever. Bye. Don't worry, just keep up your cuck ways, and I'm sure you'll find a feminist who will beat you black and blue until you have feminist theory memorized word for word. Well, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my commentary on this fucking idiot. So, go ahead and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook and all my other social media. Support me on Patreon, Ko-fi, Streamlabs, Subscribestar, any of those. Or you can buy something from my merch store. All those links will be down below. And I'll see y'all later. Yeah.